Josh, how are you? I'm good. How are you today? Good, good, good. We'll let you get settled, and then we'll get started in just a second. As a reminder, make sure to turn off your cell phones. No flash photography or live streaming is possible. Make sure to not stream this press conference. And obviously, no flash photography or cell phones. Uh, as a reminder, we'll have open locker room for LSU. We'll get you that information after in just a minute. And, but before we do that, we'll go ahead and turn it over to Coach Mulkey. Coach, if you could give an opening statement, please. I don't have one. She doesn't have one. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get started for, for questions. Uh, questions? Pete, right here on the right. Hey, Kim. Pete Iacobelli from the Associated Press. Um, what makes... Utah and Alyssa Peely so so hard to stop? Well, obviously, they spread the floor. The three ball makes her really good. She's a threat in there because you have to guard everybody else. Um, she has great footwork. She's not what I would call a big, tall per, uh, post player. Uh, she just has unbelievable knowledge when she gets the ball down there. Uh, obviously, she can hit the, the three as well. Uh, good size, strong, uh, but it's because of everybody else around her. Right here in the back. Uh, Andrea Adelson with ESPN.com. Kim, obviously, being in the Sweet 16 is old hat for you personally, but I'm wondering if you felt when you got to LSU that you'd be able to get this program to this point as quickly as you have. It never gets old for me personally. If it does, I need to retire. Um, there's no way anybody with knowledge of sports would ever tell you that um, to do it in two years is something doable. Um, you just roll up your sleeves and you go to work. The transfer portal has made things kind of happen quicker uh, but the transfer portal also hurts teams. Um, so we were able to get a lot of new pieces quickly. Uh, the hard part when you get those new pieces is they all come from different programs and you have to change a mindset. And uh, that takes time as well. Alexis Morris was the only returning uh, player from last year's team that had significant minutes. Uh, so you knew what you were getting with her. You knew uh, freshmen were going to be able to play at a, uh, an early part in early stage of their career. But that's a lot of pieces to put together. Um, LSU has been to Sweet 16s before. Uh, the LSU folks love winners. And, um, but I don't think anybody could be fair and say that we were going to do this in two years or even do what we did last year in the first year. That team had only won nine games the previous year. And you finished second behind the national champions. Um, and you went, I think, 26 and six was our record last year. So we're doing things at a very fast pace. Um, might be feeding that monster too quickly. But it sure beats the heck out of losing. Far right, right here. Hey, Kev, Kareem Copeland, Washington Post. Um, I want to ask about uh, Angel, you know, she had already established herself, but this year she's kind of kicked it up even another notch with, you know, just kind of ridiculous numbers. I'm curious, you know, are you even surprised sometimes? And what stands out the most to you about what she's been able to do this year? Well, we all knew of Angel Reese coming out of high school. She was a second ranked player in her class. And um, I knew very quickly um, after one phone call when I was at Baylor, she was staying home. So I didn't waste much time on her. And, um, um, she stayed hurt a little bit at Maryland. Um, she was like a lot of players, your freshman year is your most difficult. So she lived through that freshman year and had her ups and downs. Um, to say I expected this or that from Angel when we got her out of the portal, I don't think I was knowledgeable enough to know what I expected out of Angel Reese. Um, I knew the talent was there from high school and from the few games I watched her when she was playing at Maryland. But to think that she scored, has been a double-double 30 of our 32 games, absolutely not. Um, but we need her to be. 
but we've also had great games um, where she might have that double-double, but we've got three or four other people scoring the basketball. We're not just an Angel Reese one-man show. If you watch us play, everybody has a role to play. We're a mixture of transfers, one returning starter, freshmen, go eight deep, um, and everybody just does what they do. Uh, we've got, we can shoot the three ball, leave us open. We'll shoot it. Um, we're not afraid to, to shoot it and miss it. We'll shoot it again. Um, so I, I don't know if I really knew what kind of expectation to put on her, but she's had a tremendous year. Right here on the left. Madeline Adams from Fox 8. Coach, um, I know this program hasn't been to the Sweet 16 since 2014, but you've got several starters who have transferred in and have been in these moments. How much do you rely on their experience in these moments? Well, I think Angel Reese said it best. She's been to two already. She wants to get past that, and you love that. You love that. Um, we're excited. I think all teams that are here are excited. Um, it's playoff time, and you're seeing a lot of upsets in the women's game like never before. Uh, and we feel like that um, if we play and play hard and play defense and rebound and we win, we move on. If we get beat, we're going to hope that whoever beat, beats us, you can just say, hey, we couldn't have done any more than we did. They were just that good today. Right here up front. Yeah, Mitchell Northam filling in for the Baltimore Banner. Um, Kim, I had an angel question. Um, you know, what was your pitch to her to get her to come to LSU, and why do you think she's been able to kind of just fit in so seamlessly and kind of help take this program to the next level under you? You're a Baltimore Orioles fan, huh? Tell him to come get my son from the Cardinals. He's a free agent at the end of the year, and they need a middle infielder, okay? Pass it along. Cal Ripken came to our game this year. I don't know if you know that. Yeah, Cal Ripken, big fan of baseball, obviously. Um, what was your question about Angel? <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get my son, you know, on that major league field. He moved up with the Mets. He moved up with the Cardinals. But he needs to go somewhere where they give him a legit shot to stay. He's ready. So what was your question? Pitch. Okay. Kateri Poole was on Ohio State's team last year. They came to the PMAC and played us in the playoffs, beat us. And uh, she went into the transfer portal. And I thought there were things about Kateri's game that I liked in helping us continue to build our program. And in the process of talking to her, one of my assistant coaches said she asked, would you be interested in Angel Reese? And she said, what? And she said, Angel Reese is getting into the transfer portal, like either that day or the next day. And she said, yes, we would love to talk to Angel Reese. And so I think the connection with Kateri Poole, they go back way uh, in their younger days of playing either together or against each other and were friends. And um, they came on a visit together with their families. And I think that... Um, the seafood, y'all have good seafood, right? And uh, we didn't sell her on crawfish. We sold her on those crabs. Y'all think you have good crabs, but we got better crabs. Right here in the middle. Chessa Boucher with WVLA in Baton Rouge. Coach Mulkey, earlier in the week I asked you about Angel Reese, and you said she was just on another level. She was locked in as you guys get ready for Utah with another big on big, big time showdown. What have you seen from her? I think the Tennessee loss here actually in the SEC tournament, um, she left there realizing that um, she could have done more, maybe not scoring, maybe not rebounding. Uh, set a pick when, you, when, when the play is called, do your job. And um, I think it's kind of, um, what a lot of older players that are or competitors do is it eats on you. And um, I think Angel has the mindset. I've been in college now three years. I've been to two Sweet 16s. We lost that 17-point lead uh, in the SEC tournament. We'd already played Tennessee earlier in the year. I've got to do better. And um, I think from that moment on, I think she realizes that it's now playoff time. And uh, I think she is um, really, really focused. Todd here on the left. 
Todd Summers, WSPA TV here in Greenville. Back on February 12th in Columbia when you played South Carolina, you said that it's basically South Carolina and everybody else. Do you feel like that's still the case? And then a second part of that question, in 2012, you led a team that was 40 and 0. How hard is it night in and night out to step up to that expectation as you try to go undefeated? The first part of your question is it's South Carolina and everybody else. They're that good. They have that much depth. They have that much size. And um, yeah, they had what, one close game this year? Ole Miss. I mean, Ole Miss had a chance to win it at the end and, you know, I, I haven't changed my feelings on that. Now, I wasn't talking about them maybe getting beat or whatever. I'm just talking about winning the national championship. They have everything they need. Great coaching staff, um, experience, size. Um, how hard is it to go undefeated? I don't I, – I, I, do you know how hard it is to win a championship? I don't think any coach or any player sits down and thinks, we need to write down going undefeated as our goal. I just – that's – you don't think like that as a coach and as a competitor. You just want to hold up that trophy. You want to be the last team standing. And to do it one time in a career is so hard. I could name you a handful, maybe two handfuls of coaches that are considered some of the greatest coaches in men's and women's basketball that coached 30, 40 years and never won a championship. It's that hard. And to do it multiple times um, – you have to turn and say it's because of players. Players wanting to play in programs that uh, know what it's like and what it takes to win championships. And um, yeah, they're that good. I've got four in the line. We're gonna go to Aaron, two over here, and then back over here, starting with Aaron. Aaron Beard with the AP. Uh, Maddie Segris is a first team All-American. Angel's a first team All-American. There's a lot of talent in this bracket in particular. I'm curious at a time when women's basketball kind of has a bit of a spotlight with the Sweet 16 and the March Madness and affiliation, how valuable is it to the sport when people are watching, having eyeballs on the game, that you have the best players, you know, that level of talent to kind of sell the sport at its highest level? Well, um, I think you're, what AP, I don't, I don't know what All-American team you're talking about. Okay, um, I, I really try to not Look at many of those because Angel's not even a finalist for two of them that the that she's a finalist for, which was a shock to me that Angel Reese is not one of the four best players in the country. Now I know Wooden has their criteria, but didn't two more come out this week? Um, help me here, guys. Nay Smith. Smith yeah. Angel wasn't listed as one of the four best players, and the Wade Trophy she wasn't listed. So I appreciate that you acknowledge that she is one of the best players in the country because she is. And it's not your opinion or my opinion that matters. It's what she does on the floor. I don't know the last time I've seen a kid have 30 of 32 double doubles and be on a team that has talent. You'll see that a lot at teams that are in the middle of the pack and they rely on her for every shot and stuff like that. So. To have those types of players draw attention to the sport is awesome. Um, 50 points in a game, not many do that. And the young lady at Villanova, Seacrest, she's done that. Um, to win national championships like South Carolina, not many have done that. Boston can leave here and say she's done that. Angel Reese would like to do what Boston has done for South Carolina. Angel Reese, being an All-American is a pat on the back, but which do you want? You know, do you want to be an All-American or do you want a national championship, conference championship rings? I think all competitors would tell you, we'll trade all those individual honors for something that the team can keep forever and ever. Final three questions start with Andrew. Just wanted to ask you a follow up on something you said earlier. You said we might be feeding the beast too quickly. We'll see. What Monster. Monster, sorry. What did you mean by that? People start expecting things. So we won one game last year. We have exceeded last year's. What are they going to expect next year? How are they going to feel if we don't beat Utah? Come on now, keep perspective. 
So basically you're trying to tamper down expectations that may not be fair or real until you really, really have that kind of team that can, can you know, talk about Final Fours and talk about um, longevity in every year. Uh, what we have done in two years, where is the playbook for me to follow? I don't have one. I can think about my years at Baylor where we won the national championship uh, in five years. To me, that was unheard of. Um, all you do is work. You just work, and whatever happens, you deal with it, you get excited about it, but you keep perspective. Um, I wanted this year for our team to show progress, and we have. We've shown progress. I don't think there's any area that we went backwards, and, and that's, that's what you want to keep doing. And if along the way of showing that progress you do something unexpected, it's fun. It's fun. Staying in the back. Cam, Chantel Jennings with The Athletic. You've coached and recruited at an elite level in this sport for more than two decades. I'm curious, is there anything in the game that has sort of changed the way you do your job more than the transfer portal did in the last two years? There's many things throughout my career that have that's changed women's basketball. Let's go back to the smaller ball. Let's go back to the three-point line. Let's go back now to the portal. Let's go back now to the NIL world. Everything changes. Nothing ever stays the same except for discipline. You can always be a disciplined coach. You can always teach defense. Those things will never change. It's just who you are as a coach. What you have to do if you're going to stay in the game as long as I have is surround yourself with a staff that keeps you young and abreast of how to handle those areas that you really don't want to learn a lot about, but you know you got to embrace them. I don't want to learn about NIL, so I have someone. We were one of the first programs to assign assistant coach the title that you know, she was going to work with LSU's department in the NIL. Can you imagine me sitting down I had no idea the NIL deals that my players had until somebody showed me an article and I went, don't want to know that stuff. That's, that's not locker room stuff I care to, to talk about. Happy for them, knock your socks off, it's here to stay. Um, all I want to do is coach basketball. And I really, in my career, all I've ever wanted was for my players and our fans to experience the high you get from cutting down a net. The greatest joy I have now in my career is sitting back and watching young people with these tears in their eyes of joy, watching people in the stands just, that's, that's why I do it now, for them. And there's no greater feeling. When your career is over, and you can't put that uniform on ever again. It's the worst feeling in the world. That's why I embrace the young lady, at Mich the, the kid at Michigan. I know the feeling in her heart. Been there. S Sabrina Inescu did the same thing with her. There is no more awful feeling than when you know and you walk in that locker room and you'll never put on another college uniform. And if we had lost that game, I would have done the same thing to my seniors when they put it, take it off for the last time. And unless you have done that, you don't know the gut-wrenching, sleepless nights that you will have. Time will help them, but it's, it's terrible. And yes, some of them will go on and play pro ball, but I'm talking about college. College years are the absolute most enjoyable years of your life. All right, we got one last question here, and they have one question on Zoom as well. Uh, Coach, you mentioned defense a moment ago. Clearly, that was important against Michigan. Similar situation with varied scoring on this Utah team. Just how do you match up with them? Well, they're, they're big on the perimeter. Michigan was big on the perimeter. We understand that they're going to be big. Um, we understand they're going to spread the floor possibly a little bit more than Michigan. Um, we, we respect their threes. Look, you shoot as many threes as they shoot, they're going to make threes. 
So we're not going to pitch a shutout here. Go back to my baseball stuff. Um, but that's not all they do. They have a big-time post player. They get to the foul line. They get to the lane. So you've got to pick your poison with them and go, okay, which one can we truly try to not eliminate, but try to uh, contain a little bit. But I think everybody that's played them has tried to do that. Uh, and, and I do believe this, that you're going to have to play defense at this level to continue on. No matter how good you are offensively, I always believe um, your better defensive teams prevail. Final question on Zoo. Gabriella, unmute yourself and ask your question, please. Final call for Gabriella. All right. Well, Coach, thank you for your time. Thank you. Sorry about that. It's all right. Just doing what they want. You're good. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate your time. Good, good, good. Oh, good, good. Sorry. I'm good. No, you're good. <laughs> All right, we're going to go ahead and get started with our student athletes. As a reminder, make sure to silence your cell phones, no flash photography or video streaming. Please, um, we'll get you the open locker room information here in just a second as well, but we'll go ahead and get started. Make sure, as always, we're going to start right here up front, but make sure to state your name and affiliation. We'll get you a microphone and make sure that I see you as well raising your hand, and I'll call on you. Right here in the middle, we'll get started. Please direct your question to a student athlete, please. Scott Revely from the Baton Rouge Advocate. Uh, Angel, apparently... You're not one of the finalists for the Dane Smith or the, or the Wade trophies. Does that bother you? Do you let it slide? Do you use it as motivation? How, uh, what is your what is your feeling about that? I'm just happy to be here. I'm in a Sweet 16. I'm with my teammates. Um, I'm with the mates and coaches. I'm just happy to be back here. That, it's bigger than me. Um, I just want to be my teammates. And to get to the Final Four, that's the finalist I want to be. Right here in the middle. Corey Diaz with the USA Today Network for really all three of you, but uh, talk about visibility uh, of, a, of, a, of a basketball program. Um, Angel, I saw a video of you uh, look like on Instagram Live. <laughs> uh, you probably don't need me to give you the specifics, yes. but just, I guess, in terms of helping a program build maybe a little bit quicker, as Kim's talked about, than maybe normally, how much does visibility come into account, do you think? And Blasey and Alexis, please chime in as well. Yeah, we're just more than an athlete. I mean, I was just talking to Carolyn Peck about just being a black woman and being able to have an impact on all communities, white, black, any Mexican, like it doesn't matter who, old, young, I've made an impact and we've all made an impact on different kinds of people. So just being that and embracing that and just such in a positive way. I mean, I feel like I've grown women's basketball within the last six months and being able to do that and I've grown my platform on and off the court. So I'm more than an athlete and just being able to have that embrace that of just having people respect women's basketball and I, I, I love it. So that's why I'm with that. Y'all have anything you want to add? Flaje, Alexis, either or? We lit. We on your turn. <laughs> <laughs> no, sure. On top of that, right here on the right. Hey, y'all. Kareem Copeland, Washington Post. Uh, hey. This one, hey, how are you? Good. <laughs> uh, this one's for Angel. I'm, I'm curious, you know, you obviously had a lot of success before you got down here, and, and but you really kicked it up another notch this season. What was the offseason like for you as far as working to get better and, and 
taking your game to another level. I don't, I'm curious what you kind of focused on. Yeah, I mean, as um, soon as I got to LSU, they had a plan for me. As um, soon as I got here, being in shape was one of the most important things. I think last year I was playing 20 to 25 minutes a game and then being able to up that to what, 31, 35, 31 to 35 minutes a game, being able to play that was one thing. And then just being able to play under a system where I'm really confident. I, I'm super confident. I've been able to do these things that I'm doing right now before, but just within a program that really loves me, embraces me, puts a lot of confidence in me. I have really confident teammates, really competitive teammates that push me every day to be better. So just being able to a program where I can just be myself and just be who I am and embrace that. Pete in the back. Pete Yacobelli, Associated Press. Uh, two quick questions, one for Alexis. You played a lot of talented post people all this year. <laughs> What's it going to be like with uh, going up against uh, Alyssa Pilly? And I wanted to ask Plojay, you've got a very prominent brand uh, away from the court as well. Mm -hmm. How do you handle that? And do you ever worry about maybe some of your followers getting a little sideways, taking it too far? You know, do you ever worry about, like, like maybe the way they reacted with Olivia uh, on campus and, and, and uh, in the stands at times? Um. <clears throat> Yeah, either one. Flaja, you start with okay. yours. Yeah. I think, um, I mean, I've been in the spotlight for a little while. I'm not going to lie. Like, I've been, I was on TV since I was like 12 years old, you know, on the rap game and America's Got Talent. So, really, I just learned how to handle it. Um, my mama, the mama bear, she don't let nobody get too close. So, I don't be too worried about that. I know how to keep things separate. Like, during the season, it's focused strictly on basketball. But this summer, I'm outside. We're outside. We're outside. <laughs> Angel, can you answer your quick part? You want me to? You want me to answer? I'm the post. She did. Yeah, I'm the point guard. So. I, no, I just wondered. If, I wondered how many people, you know, you, you come up against the good players in the past. I wanted to see Alexis and uh, Um, I respect Peely's game. She's a versatile post player, but um, I feel like I got the best post players in the country. So, um, I'm sitting right next to her, and one's in the locker room. So. Hey, it's gonna be a competitive game, and we respect Utah and what they what they bring to the court. And you know, hats off, 5 p.m. Right here on the right, uh, Michael Cobble, WBRZ in Baton Rouge. Um, for Lex and, and Flage specifically, Kim was talking about how she's had to adapt throughout the years to different things. But her one thing she doesn't change is defense and discipline. Um, I'm assuming she's not real big in the rap game, right? So, <laughs> so just how has she been able to kind of be flexible with you as a young player and kind of be relatable to you? And then obviously, Lex, you've seen her change throughout the years. Oh, like you basically answered it yourself. Her defense hasn't changed. She has the exact same defensive principles since uh, my freshman year at Baylor, um, which is to dominate – your opponents and dictate the game and because she knows that you can't sometimes you're going to have off nights but one thing we can always control is our defense because it doesn't take talent or skill it's just simply based off of effort and yeah we we are definitely a more defensive minded team right now oh yeah you mean like musically and things like she tries <laughs> you're very oh, different <laughs> Coach Moki, man, she's so funny. She really trying to keep up with the times, but you know, we teaching her, you know what I'm saying? We got to teach her and keep her on point. Um, she really didn't embrace me though, like with me being a rapper, a lot of coaches, they didn't even want to recruit me because of it. But she not only recruited me and got me here, but she even embraced it. And she even make me rap a lot, <laughs> like when we have like luncheons and stuff like that. So she really support everything I'm doing. She love it. Right here in the blue shirt. Did you still have one? Okay, all right, up here in front. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Then we'll go up front. Chessa Boucher with WVLA here in, Bat or in Baton Rouge, back in Louisiana. <laughs> um, Angel, going against another big-time big in the postseason, it seems like you're playing at a next level in the playoffs. Kind of where is that coming from? Obviously, it's the playoffs. It sparked from the Tennessee game. Um, I don't think I found my best – that wasn't my best defensive game, and I feel like I let my teammates down um, since then. I've just been in another mode where I'm not going to let somebody dominate me like that again. So just being able to come back within the team, getting back to the weight room, getting stronger, getting back in better shape, and just being ready for postseason was just something that was really important to me because I want to go out with my seniors in the right way and 
I want to leave Alexis back in her home, back to Dallas, and just being able to embrace that. So I don't want to be the reason that we we lose a, we lose another game. Right up front, right here. He wasn't the reason. The first yeah, Mitchell Norbin with Baltimore Banner. Um, Andrew, I was just going to ask you. You know, I've seen you tweet a couple of times. You know, I'm from Baltimore. You seem to have a lot of pride in where you're from. Just kind of wondering, you know, what what it means to you to be from there, and kind of how your roots from Baltimore show up on the court. Yeah, just grow, just growing up around the area and playing ball there um, has just something that has always molded to, molded me into who I am. Playing outside and just being able to be super competitive. I used to play with boys. Um, I have a brother, so just being able to know that a lot of people in Baltimore don't really make it out, and just being able to have this platform that I have right now and being able to put on for them and be an example for them is just something that's been really important to me. So for the little girls that are looking up to me, just for having them the inspiration and know that they can do this as well. Right here on the left. From Fox 8 New Orleans, uh, this is for all the players, but you guys were here just three weeks ago for the SEC tournament. How much of a benefit is it to have played on this court before, walked through these halls? I mean, how much do you guys think that that will be a benefit tomorrow? Flaja, you can start. Um, for me, it makes me a little more comfortable because, like, I'm just, like, not as nervous. I'm just, like, we in the same arena. It's time to get back to business, really come back with a vengeance because last time we played on here, we lost. So, so I'm coming back, and they're just going to feel that from the last game. Go down the line, Alexis. Um, for me, I'm big on rims. So um, I'm going to piggyback off of what Fly J said, too, just being comfortable in the arena and the atmosphere here. And I feel like, you know, um, this is kind of our second home. Like, we're familiar. Um, I just feel like you don't get these chances twice. Being able to come back here within the last three weeks, that's God's plan right here. And I, I, I believe in that a lot, and I just feel like, we ain't going to walk out of here with that same grit feeling that we felt last time. And that's just my mindset right now. Down here on the right. Hey, y'all. Kareem Copeland, Washington Post. Uh, this one's for Alexis. And I want to ask about Angel. <laughs> you know, she stays hype. What kind of energy, you know, besides, you know, the skill that she brings on the court, but what kind of energy and, and juice does she bring to the floor um, game in and game out for y'all? Flavio, hey. you want to start? Hey, Alexis, either one. Oh, um, man, just, um, just great energy. Great energy, man. Just a real leader on the court. Really vocal. She'll tell you, Flaw, that's a bad shot. And then the next one she'll tell you, you 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 going crazy, keep doing it, stay confident. You know what I'm saying? She just tell you what you need to hear. Things that's gonna help you grow as a player. Um just a really great leader. Great, great, great leader on both ends of the floor. Angel's brutally honest. She's always gonna let you know what it is and what it ain't, period. And I think um you have to respect that about an individual like Angel because a lot of people can't really accept the truth. And Angel, she can take it too. I think that's what makes her who she is because she can take it and dish it. And that's really beautiful in the art of basketball because a lot of people can't take constructive criticism. And she can. And she that's why it's so respecting when she tells us what it is, period. Back left. Andrea Adelson with ESPN.com for the three of you. Coach Moki just said she didn't really have a playbook for getting to this point after only two years in a program. And this is also a new team compared to the one she had last year. So I'm wondering, what is it about this group of ladies that you have together that has allowed you to get to this point now where you're in the Sweet 16? Um, I think we're just really confident. Um, I don't think we're scared of anything. Nothing has scared us. I mean, we've been hit for, for sure, two losses of sure, for sure, but nothing has put us down. I mean, I don't know if you've seen a picture from the last sweet, the last game before this game um, in the locker room when I grabbed Coach Mulkey's face this time and just telling her, I got you, like, I got you, and just telling her, like, we're going to get out of Baton Rouge. Like, I told, I told her before that game, we're going to get out of Baton Rouge, and I think that she has a lot of confidence within our team. Even though we are young, we have nine new pieces, she doesn't really have expectations for us, but when she has like confident people on her on her on her team, I think it kind of lifts up a lot of weight on her shoulders. So she's confident in us, and I'm really confident in all the coaches. It's the postseason, so if Coach Moki has to coach us through every play, then we shouldn't be here anyway. Um, this is what we practice for. This is what we focus on, and you know when we lost to Tennessee, we we especially start to focus on execution. And knowing what we need to do, like I said, Coach Moki can't coach us every position during the course of a game. We're out there actually playing the game. We have to have a feel for each other in the game. And I'm laughing in the inside because you said she doesn't have plays, but she has had the same plays since my freshman year. So it's like... <laughs> No, 
sound like a like, play. But a play. He's taken LSU after two years to do Jesus is King is rare for a coach. Facts, facts, facts. She is the plan. <laughs> coach Monkey is the GOAT. All LSU needed was Coach Monkey. Facts. <laughs> she brought us in here. Facts, <laughs> like, that's why I be, she don't give herself enough credit, like. She she brought these pieces, you know what I'm saying, to Baton Rouge. She probably didn't know how it was gonna fit, but she knew that she had something. You feel me? And we building a culture. So like everything we doing right now is gonna build a culture for next year and next year and next year. Hopefully to be a final four team every year. You know what I'm saying? That's what we're trying to build. But Coach Moki, she put the pieces together. You know what I'm saying? She's been doing this a long time. So, you know, all we gotta do is play our part and she's gonna lead us there. Final question here on the right. Angel, I think you just answered this. So if Alexis and uh, Flaugé could answer it, let's start with Flaugé. Just the confidence that you got from that last game, that mm -hmm. was definitely the best game I've seen you all play as a team. Yeah. Um, just, and I asked Kim after the game, did y'all grow up? And, and it really felt like you did, I guess, just this noise. No, it's um, been what, the whole time. Did it feel like that as a player? Did you grow up? Man, it felt like, it was a crazy feeling, actually. Like, when we was playing defense, it felt like we was on the string, like, Everybody was moving on one accord. I keep telling people that. And I don't know, it's just a different energy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, everybody's on the same page. I had a certain feeling that I ain't felt since the beginning of the season. Like, even though our non conference was weak, or whatever. But, like, I felt that feeling that I felt like we was playing together. And I was like, bro, we destined for greatness. You know what I'm saying? We all on one accord. It's a beautiful thing to see. I think we played our best defense the whole season. And we just got to carry that on into this game. She she pretty much answered it. We all focused. We know what we need to do. And we all clicking right now. And I think this is the perfect time of the season to be on the same page. Facts. Thank y'all. No tiger.